Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering colleges panic as massive funding fraud gets eliminated. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Elon Musk put out a tweet that tells the whole story. Can you believe that universities with tens of billions of dollars in endowments we're siphoning off 60% of research award money for overhead. What a ripoff. And the NIH explains it well. Last year, $9 billion of the $35 billion that the National Institutes of Health granted for research was used for administrative overhead, what is known as indirect costs. So this is keeping the lights on. This is cleaning the place, but it's also for staff and it's also for massive administrative staff Diversity, equity, and inclusion, who do you think is paying for all that? Not the colleges, even though they have billions of dollars. They take money away from research grants from the federal government, and they put a massive chunk of it towards paying those expenses. And I'm doing this story to let you know how bad it is inside the federal government, but also how good it is that the Trump administration is dealing with this, and they're telling these colleges and these research institutions no more. We're not doing this. And the NIH announced, today, NIH lowered the maximum indirect cost rate research institutions can charge the government to 15% above what many major foundations allow and much lower than the 60% plus that some institutions charge the government today. This change will save more than $4 billion a year effective immediately. Harvard charges as much as 69%. Harvard has an endowment, an investment fund from excess donations and excess revenues that they receive of $53.2 billion. They were charging 69% to the federal government. Yale, $41.4 billion, charging 67.5% to the federal government. John Hopkins, $13.1 billion in their endowment, charging 63.7% to the federal government. All of that has been reduced to 15% maximum charge on any of the grants. If they don't want to apply for grants, they don't have to. Plenty of other institutions and colleges and universities can apply for grants. Even Bill Gates only allows 10% from his Gates Foundation grants. So why are we paying even 15%? Well, it's the federal government and it's for the betterment of society. And yeah, these guys are going to have to adjust. And it's difficult to have this dropped on them like a load of bricks at the last minute to say, look, all of the grants effective immediately, you better not come back to us and say that you're charging us more than a 15% overhead rate. That's your maximum. So sure, it's a last minute thing. So, okay, 15% for now seems okay. So what are they doing with these billions of dollars if they're not helping to cover the costs of their own expenses, their own salaries, their own buildings, or their own overhead? A college endowment is a long-term investment fund that provides a steady source of income for a college or a university. Endowments are made up of many individual donations that are invested to support the college's educational and research mission. So you could support some of your own research mission. You don't have to have the American people paying for it just because you're friends with the people at the NIH. And that's how this works. Everyone knows each other. They help each other out, and if no one's looking at the expenses and no one's complaining, they get away with it. Well, not anymore. And of all places, Harvard, $53 billion invested, and you can't afford to pay some of your own expenses. It's been out of control, but not anymore. From the Hill, NIH cuts overhead funding for research. And this isn't even saying, like, maybe we shouldn't be doing this research. This is saying, okay, we'll fund the research. But stop making the federal government pay for all of your really expensive salaries for your ridiculous administrative staff. The National Institutes of Health on Friday made a significant reduction in grants reserve for research institution, a decision that may significantly impact American higher education. The NIH said it provided more than $35 billion in grants to more than 2,500 institutions in 2023, announcing that it will now limit the amount granted for indirect funding to 15%. You can't expect to just have 100% of the money going to the research work because they have to do that work inside of a building. That building has maintenance needs. There are legitimate expenses to a facility, but not 
or even the average of around 30%, still way too much. The funding helps cover universities' overhead and administrative expenses and previously averaged nearly 30%, with some universities charging more than 60%. The change takes effect immediately and will save roughly $4 billion per year. A directive issued from the department argued that its funds should go directly towards scientific research rather than administrative overhead. Quote, the United States should have the best medical research in the world. It's accordingly vital to ensure that as many funds as possible go towards direct scientific research costs rather than administrative overhead, it stated. Reacting to the development, the Association of Public Land-Grant Universities said this decision would limit medical breakthroughs that cure cancer. They always like to bring out cancer. What it's going to limit is your ability to keep building up your endowments and hire more people for diversity, equity, and inclusion and other administrative staff. If you don't want the research grant, another university will take that research grant. You can guarantee that much. The organization's president, Mark Becker, said in a statement, quote, NIH slashing the reimbursement of research costs will slow and limit medical breakthroughs that cure cancer and address chronic diseases such as diabetes and heart disease. Why don't you just say you're going to cure autism while you're at it? Or how about old age? Quote, let there be no mistake. This is a direct and massive cut to life-saving medical research, according to his statement. Becker called on the Trump administration to reconsider the action, calling it self-defeating. During its first week, the administration abruptly decided to freeze the grant review process at the NIH. The decision led to the cancellation of meetings, including study sections, which review the applications for NIH fellowships and grants. Advisory Council meetings, which determine if an application should receive a recommendation for funding from an NIH institute or center, were also canceled. Quote, I don't know that there's a precedent to this, certainly not on this scale, said Esther Chu, a professor of emergency medicine at Oregon Health and Science University, whose NIH study section was canceled. And from CNN, they are really upset about this. Researchers decry disastrously bad idea as NIH slashes payments for research infrastructure. It's not research infrastructure as much as it is overhead of their operations. If you take out all of the nonsense administrative salaries, you'd have a much lower number. The U.S. National Institutes of Health is lowering the maximum indirect cost rate that research institutions can charge the government. That move, scientists say, could be devastating for the nation's position as a research leader. The average NIH grant to an institution has typically had about 30% earmarked for infrastructure costs such as facilities, maintenance, and security, but also overhead salaries and diversity, equity, and inclusion, which a lot of these places, especially the large universities, have massive staffs of these people doing essentially nothing but pushing their ridiculous ideological agendas. Why is the federal government financing something like that? Of course they shouldn't finance that. Next time, hopefully in these grants, they will earmark no diversity, equity, and inclusion staff should receive a dollar of this research-related money. The NIH said the move would more closely align government-funded indirect costs with rates paid by private foundations. The Gates Foundation, for example, pays a 10% rate for indirect costs, while the Carnegie Corporation and John Templeton Foundation each pay 15% of indirect costs for research. But researchers said the new policy would kneecap the nation's status as a global leader. And speaking of research, researching this story for you guys, the people criticizing the federal government for cutting back its overhead rate that they're paying are saying that the reason that these foundations can charge less money, the private foundations, like the Gates Foundation, is because the federal government subsidizes them so highly, they come to count on that. So Gates wouldn't be able to afford the 10% number. He'd have to charge more, if not for our federal government paying the difference. And now that we're not going to pay the difference, certainly not at that level, the private institutions will also have financial problems because we need to subsidize literally every entity in the world and every self-destructive agenda in the world. That's their argument. It's not going to happen. Here is some delicious complaining. Quote, research is not just about having the scientists and the lab equipment. It's about ensuring that the institution has a support system in place. According to Dr. Harlan Crumholz, and Dr. Harold Hines, junior professor of medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. But without these overhead expenses being covered, 
Research institutions will struggle to maintain the very research infrastructure that enables groundbreaking medical advances. Well, that sounds great if you're a moron and you don't realize, hey, you know what? I don't know, maybe the guys at Yale could tap into that $41.4 billion they have, or maybe a small portion of it that they get as an income stream, as interest and return on investments when they invest this $41 billion, which they do. They always invest their endowments. It also might not surprise you that these doctors and scientists are, of course, all multimillionaires. But they need more of a handout from the federal government. Institutions will have to absorb these costs themselves, Krumholz said, or cut back on their work. There's certainly opportunities to streamline operations, reduce unnecessary overhead, make research funding more transparent and effective, but cutting the indirect rate so abruptly, so drastically, without sufficient safeguards, will threaten the foundational infrastructure that supports our research capacity. Or just take the money from your endowment until you figure out how to save these unnecessary overhead expenses that you've been sticking with the federal government to pay. Dr. Carl Bergstrom, or I just call him Carl, a biologist at the University of Washington, noted on social media that the new policy, quote, means cutting one of the most important sources of university funding nationwide by 75% or more. For a large university, this creates a sudden and catastrophic shortfall of hundreds of millions of dollars against already budgeted funds. And he said this, of course, on Blue Sky, because he's one of those Blue Sky guys. Dr. Theodore Owashana, a professor of pulmonary and critical care medicine and of health policy and management at John Hopkins University, said the move was a disastrously bad idea. Quote, this would be devastating for research, he wrote in an email to CNN. It would mean the direct costs we get will not go nearly as far. It means the private foundations that currently give money for research, often only possible because the NIH is paying for the infrastructure, won't want to give because their money won't go as far. Quote, and frankly, this means that the lives of my children and grandchildren, and maybe yours, will be shorter and sicker because discoveries will not be made. It means the NIH research that has been the backbone of the high-tech health economy will be gutted reducing their economic opportunities. And if there are such great economic opportunities, then why do we need these massive government subsidies? Dr. Ned Sharpless, director of the National Cancer Institute from 2017 to 2022, predicted that universities across the country will move swiftly to challenge the new policy, but he said he agreed with the NIH that a reevaluation of indirect costs is needed. Quote, I think a discussion of what is the right balance of indirect costs for American research is a good discussion to be having, he told CNN. The impact of this across institutions would not be uniform. The places that are most dependent on indirects, meaning indirect funding, tend to be private research institutions with high facilities costs. And these places will really struggle with such a policy. U.S. Senator Patty Murray from Washington said the abruptly lowered indirect cost rate is illegal under its Labor HHS Education Appropriations Bill. Well, this funding helps produce breakthroughs that change patients' lives, prepare us for pandemics and other global health threats, and ensure the U.S. continues to be the global leader in biomedical research, she said in a statement. Quote, after a global pandemic that brought the world economy to a grinding halt and cost more than one million American lives, it's unthinkable that President Trump and Elon Musk want to pull funding that will force the public and private labs across America to shudder. Trump proposed capping indirect costs in his previous administration, but the effort was unsuccessful. More recently, indirect cost reform was one of the proposals in Project 2025, a sweeping plan to overhaul the government that Trump disavowed during his campaign. Well, it sounds like that Project 2025 idea was a great idea. We need to stop having the federal government subsidize the lifestyles of very wealthy people and very rich endowments of elite institutions. This was abrupt. I'm going to be straight about it. This is an abrupt change, which is to say they were not expecting this to happen, which does make it difficult to plan things. If, for example, you were working at a job and all of a sudden they cut 30% or 40% of your income, you might say, hey, wait a minute, this is a big deal, and why didn't you tell me you were going to do this? And that's a fair criticism. However, these cuts need to be made now, not negotiated over the next two or three or four years. The adjustments have to happen. People have to start to respect the federal government's money, which is really the taxpayer's money, not just use it to make themselves richer. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. 
click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you. And if you'd like to support the channel and help me make even more videos, subscribe to the channel and become a paid member today.